You're listening to the Beyond Sundays podcast. Each week, we talk to people just like you who share stories of God's faithfulness. Today, I sit down with my friend, Renee Boo, and y'all just listen up. This conversation is so full of truth and grace when it comes to health and wellness. As a faith-based wellness coach, Renee helps people connect their health to their faith so that they can walk in greater levels of freedom and wellness, not just for the body, but also for the mind and spirit. And who doesn't want that? We know we need freedom in every aspect of our lives, including our health. But sometimes we can get discouraged. Wait, am I the only one? (laughs) I sure hope not. Renee, I love her so much. She shares her own struggles with body image, comparison, insecurities, and her journey to learning her worth and value in the kingdom. And y'all, I'll just confess right now, Renee, the coach that she is, just went there with me personally. Like I ended up saying something that, you know, I felt like I had failed in an area and she just, she just flat out called me up. So get ready because you're going to get some freedom today too. So let's get to it. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to have a friend joining me in the studio today. I have Renee Boo with me. Hello, Renee. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I am so pumped, y'all. If you could be a fly on the wall in this office studio (laughs) with the amount of mess that I just did. We know it's going to be good, right? Yes. Okay, so real quick, here's what happened. Sarah really struggled with the microphone for Renee and was like, where is the problem? Where is the problem? And then found it. Unplugged everything, and then through the series of several recordings, decided, oh, yeah, that's unplugged. I need to plug that back in. (laughs) But she did it. But she figured it out with no help. So So we're here. We're here. And we're pumped about this conversation because you are passionate about this, and so am I, and that is freedom and wellness. Uh, But before we dive in, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell everyone a little bit about you. Yeah. So my name is Renee Boom. And I actually work here at church um, at Beltway. I work in the foster adoption ministry. I do marketing and media for our foster adoption team. And so that is super fun to build an online presence and um, just to build awareness of the needs of foster care in our city. And then I also am a mom of three. I am Mm -hmm. a wife. Um, We're a military family. And then I run a coaching business. I'm a faith-based wellness coach where I coach women on how to connect their health to their faith so they can walk in freedom. I love that. Yes. And we all need freedom in our wellness. We do. We need freedom in every aspect of our lives. Yes. And um, our health... Our wellness, mind, body, spirit is definitely a part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we are, just like you said, our bodies are made up of, yeah, this physical piece, but also mental and spiritual too. And it's the Lord is concerned about our whole body. All of it, all three. And so um, I'm really passionate about helping women connect the dots to that and so they can pursue wellness, whatever their goals are from that place of freedom in Christ, because he's the one that brings the freedom. And so if we can have it in all the other areas of our life, why can't we have it in our health and wellness? Sure. Well, I mean, that's why we're having this conversation. Just like you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's, this is a surge as far as like at the beginning of the year with the new year, we're all thinking about new year's resolutions, Yeah. but like, really do resolutions last, right? not always. right? And many of us can find ourselves, I mean, while we're recording this, we're in week two of the new year. And I think 2023 is going to be a fantastic year. I really am. I have hope, high hopes for what the Lord is wanting to do because he is always moving and always working in our lives. So I'm excited and looking forward to what the Lord has for me individually and, and also just in general for the church. But specifically, like we know the statistics are that it takes 40 days to build a new rhythm, a new habit. So if we have these newer goals that we're wanting to introduce into our lives around the new year, around week two, week three, sometimes even after week one or day one, we can find ourselves becoming discouraged. Yeah, actually, so, yeah. the 13th, um, whenever this goes out, um, January 13th is like National Quitters Day. No way. It's like, it's declaring that. And so we're really oh close to that, right? And yeah. whether this comes out afterwards or not. So if you have already, quote unquote, stopped quit on your goals like it's it's you're not alone yeah there's no shame or guilt like it's it's something that happens because of usually our strategies and the way Mm -hmm. we approach it but um the the hype kind of wears off yeah the hype does but i mean like 60 percent of americans are at one point are going to try to have these newer goals and the top three goals are all related to health i love it health and wellness because we want to live longer we want to feel healthy we want to be able to do the things that we feel called to do and i know we're going to talk about that here in a little bit um but yeah, 
at the end of the year, wow. only about 9% actually stuck with their goals yeah. or with their uh, quote unquote New Year's resolutions. And so discouragement is a huge factor. Yeah. Uh, we, we're we're going to talk about vision and those things, that, things like that, that you're very, very passionate about. But just to start off at the beginning, tell us your story about health and wellness um, in your journey and what that has looked like and how you have gotten to the point where you are today um, being so passionate about this topic. Okay. Um, let's start. We'll start with what I you hear this phrase out of your biggest pain comes your biggest ministry or your most effective ministry. So mm-hmm. I'll start there with okay. Um, I struggled a lot as I would say as early as elementary school, which as a mama of girls in elementary, that makes me sad. But I struggled that early with body image and self image and self worth and just seeing the world around me. And I couldn't even really put words on it then, but just feeling like I was in a bigger body than anyone else. And that was a big struggle. And that led, I mean, that was my whole life. I mean, years and years, middle school, high school, college, (laughs) young married, all of it, just not feeling like I added up, like I measured up, being insecure in that body and wanting to change that, like not really knowing my worth and value in Christ at that time is what I see it as now. But that longing to change how I looked physically. And so that happens you to fix that it's a restrictive diet mm-hmm. it's um which you cannot sustain you cannot right. sustain this restriction and then, then you feel really bad about yourself you feel like what's wrong with me where's my willpower and then i call it the what the heck you just what the heck and then eat all the things and you go on this other end of just neglecting the body and then you a few weeks in however long that takes start feeling lethargic because you're eating foods that don't make you feel good and you're not moving and so you go the other way again of that extreme restriction and it only lasts so long and you go back and forth in this pendulum swing all to look a certain way Mm -hmm. to fit in to um you know to feel loved and accepted is what it was and it was exhausting and it's painful and if anyone's ever been there um if you don't know the struggle um you don't know but if you do you do i feel like we all i mean at some level are gonna have our hands raised going yeah me too like at some level me too yeah and i think even men can have this and our our teenage boys like um, it can be a real struggle. And what I found for me, it was hindering the way I was living life. I wasn't doing things I think God was calling me to do because I was afraid of what people would say going in in a bigger body or um, not feeling like like I mattered because of my size and things of that. So um, that's the pain that I had. And there came a point um, where God just intervened. I was actually on social media. I love social media. I think it's a great tool for the Lord. Uh, I think He brings light there, and I like to be a part of that. And I was actually scrolling, and there was an author that I follow, and she was just sharing that she struggled with body image, which at that time, this is probably 10 years ago, we weren't talking about it as much. She said she struggled with body image and food and shared a Bible study that she did. And y'all, that one post... God used it and totally changed the directory of my life and my freedom journey because I went and found that Bible study and started learning that God cares about this deep pain that I have. Mm -hmm. It's not just about food and working out and health. It was deeper. It was a core identity issue. Yeah. And so this was really where my freedom journey began. We have we have freedom here at Beltway, and it looks different for lots of people. For me, God. Got to my heart through this deep pain. I think about like that eight and 10 year old girl with this deep pain of just hating her body and carrying that until I was 27, 28, 29. God used this avenue, this pain to really tell me how much he loved me, Mm -hmm. to show me my identity and worth in Christ and just to begin a healing journey. And so that is why I'm so passionate about this today because he took what was that restriction and then that binge eating and all of that um, disordered relationship with food and body and he redeemed it. And he brought it back to where now, I mean, that's a long process, but where now I see wellness as this get to, and I see it as um, I focus on my wellness, mind, body, and spirit so that I'm fit to fulfill my purpose. And I want to bring other people along with me, which is why I coach. I want to have help other people experience that freedom, whether it is from food or body image or whatever it is, um, experience that freedom and bring them into where they can have this renewed mind. Yes. Romans yes. 12 to be transformed by renewing the way you think. Yes. And if you're in bondage to anything, right, you're not free from it. God can use, God can transform us and he can do that through renewing the way we think. And that has been a big 
part of my journey and where I like to take people. That's beautiful. I love that. And as someone who's also a mom of daughters in yeah. elementary, one in elementary, one in middle school. I mean, if you listen to the podcast recently, actually right at this, the top of the new year, we had um, our daughters on the podcast and Ellie shared hmm. right there in the middle of the conversation, unbeknownst to my husband and I, that she was struggling with this lie already that she yeah. was comparing, you know, her body to other people's bodies. And you know, thank the Lord she brought that into the light. And I'm so thankful that she brought it into the light because as parents, we were able to walk her through that uh, journey. Um, and that is a journey we will be on now. Yes, and you know? I think it's, praise the Lord that that conversation came up because what happens with me, I was doing it in the dark, mm-hmm. right? And that's where the enemy wants to keep us yes. and doing it in the dark. So if your kids do start talking about this, don't run from it, you press in and you yes. like, let's work on that. And I also think, you know, as moms and dads, they're watching how we talk about our bodies and yes. the things that we say. And yes. so we're very guarded, me and my husband both about what we say and the way we word our wellness that's and our, good. our goals and our journey because we want to guard their hearts, but we also don't want to shy away from things if they're going through it. We, come, we go after it, right? Mm-hmm. We take that ground back. And so I'm glad you guys are doing that with your daughter. That's, that's smart that you know it's there and now you know how to combat it and fight yeah. it. So. Well, I love these. I love this new year mentality because, yeah, like we mentioned earlier, it's a surge where we're all looking internally and we're reviewing things from last year and looking forward to the next year. And and we're just going, okay, Lord, what do you have? What what are the changes? But even beyond that, what I love about this, adding the freedom piece into wellness um, for you specifically as a wellness coach, a faith-based wellness coach, what I love is that you're not just looking at resolutions, you're we're looking at spiritual solutions and yeah. who has that solution is Jesus. He's yeah. always the one we run to. You know, this, the word says that man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so if there is this extra weight that we are carrying that, and I'm not meaning like weight as in the physical, I'm meaning weight on the heart. Like there are things that we're holding on to that, that are being kept in the dark that are literally keeping us from what you said earlier our purpose, like we mm-hmm. have, we have to bring that into the light. We have to talk to the Lord about that. So, man, I mean, you're online. You're doing what you're doing online with encouraging women um, and people who follow you online through social media, doing exactly the way that you know you were encouraged to start this journey. And the Lord used social media to kind of like spark that in you. But what are some of the things you're hearing like right now that women are are talking about yeah. as far as this journey for for individuals. Yes, I love that. And before I go there, you said something about like bringing it to the light. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing is like, as you're listening, I felt like as we were talking, if someone's listening to this now, and they feel like I really struggle with my body image or with food or whatever, it doesn't have to be anything about the body, bring it to the light, right? Even just share it with your spouse or your best friend, bring it to the light. And so much healing comes from that. Amen. And so that's what I'm doing online is bringing things to the light. Um, and what I find online right now is people just want to know that they're not alone. That the, the, the enemy likes to isolate us. I'm the only one that struggles with body image. I'm the only one that struggles with food anxiety. I'm the only one that struggles with um, thinking these thoughts about myself. And so part of the thing I do online is I really just share where I struggle. Yeah. Because if I can say this is where I struggle, a lot of people will raise their hand and say me too. Yeah. And there's a lot of power in that community of I'm not alone. And then highlighting um, you know, how God cares about that area and 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 letting people have permission to to process through it. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of things we're seeing online. I love what we see online today with body image positivity and things we're seeing larger size bodies represented. I see them in Target ads. Yeah. Those things guys get me excited. So um so that's kind of happening online. What I see online is a lot of people are confused with wellness of like what to eat, what not to eat. And again, I don't do that in my health coaching. I don't do nutrition and um movement exercise i teach people to let's go to god yes he designed you Mm -hmm. he made you he knows what you need and i am like a nerd when i love to learn nutrition and i love to like i've tried all the things in a healthy place of like does this work for my body and like that's where i want to bring people is let's take the confusion away from what we're hearing online about health and wellness and let's go to the source yes let's ask holy spirit what's best for my body so good and so it's not just i don't just train your like your wellness but we're training like how do we listen to god and 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 go the way he's telling us to go mm-hmm. in this season and he might shift it mm-hmm. someday he's going to tell you to do this i mean in my journey there was a very clear season where he told me to stop trying to lose weight 
which I was not happy about. And I didn't <laughs> obey at first because I was two pounds away from that magic goal number of like uh, your pre-baby weight. Yep. And this was like 10 years later, but I was two pounds away. <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> Let me just tell you, like, it's okay if you don't lose that baby weight yeah. in like six weeks. That's crazy. Um, bless those of you that do, but those of us that don't, it's okay too. Yes. Um, but I was two pounds away and he told me to stop trying to lose weight. And I'm like, ah. and so that was a season. And then that was a season now where he's like, enter back in to wellness and weight loss from a place of freedom. So that's, that's what I want to encourage is like, let's stop. Let's go to the internet for encouragement, please. That's where I go. I love it. But then let's point to God and ask him, what does he have for what your you particular yeah. wellness journey, even to down to what you eat? If mm-hmm. you ask him, he'll answer you because mm-hmm. he's a good God and his sheep hear his voice. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't they hear his voice about what he wants them to eat or how he wants them to move or how he wants them to meditate or stress or sleep? If if you are out there and you're hearing this and you're feeling any condemnation, what I want to say Come is on. there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Yes. And I'm just going to use this point to be vulnerable with you this week. Um, we are in week two of the new year, and I have not been my my goals for for my wellness have not been perfect this week. I started out strong this last week and and the way like the first week of the of the new year. Um I have a minimum of what I want to do and I that that for me works when it comes to moving my body and healthy eating. I have a minimum and then I have things that the Lord has shared with me that are part of my wellness journey that I I know in my mind and I have people that are keeping me accountable to that and we're going to talk about that here in a moment. But I want to say just I failed this this week. I did. And I want to say that you need to, I would say, if you were if we were walking this together, what does failed mean? Because you just said you had a minimum, but like maybe the minimum doesn't need to be there. Maybe it's even a less of a minimum and that's okay. Yeah. Right? Because that's the problem is people think we have this, I'm going to do A, B, C. Right. And let's say you did A and C and you didn't do B, you failed. Right. Who says? Mm-hmm. The rules are made up yeah. and you get to make them up. And so that's part of it is like we have to reframe success and failure when it comes to wellness. Honestly, when it comes to all of our goals, I'm a goals girl. I love this time of the year. If we can reframe that, if we can transform that thought from all or nothing to all or something. Oh, that's good. Did yes. You, did you do something? Yeah. Something that brought you to that goal? Then you then you didn't fail. You yeah. succeeded. And, and so that, good. it's just a rewiring of our brain. Our brain is a very all or nothing. It's just kind of programmed that way. And we have to rewrite it. But I love, I keep going back to Romans 12 too, because I'm like, if God said something about our mindset and being transformed by our new way we think, I'm going to believe that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to work on that. And a lot of times we don't work on that. We just look on the exterior. What am I going to eat? How am I going to pray if I'm doing spiritual disciplines? What Bible plan am I going to read? Like whatever the wellness is, we never buy body, spirit. We look at the plan, but we don't look about how I'm approaching the plan from the way I'm thinking about it yeah, and the way I'm feeling about it the lord as i've been talking to him about this week um because i haven't felt guilty or anything it's just like yeah i get a new day tomorrow yeah i have a new day today his mercies are new every day and I, I keep hearing that old testament scripture like do not despise the small beginnings yes because all of those small things lead to greater things yes and they build up over time the the major thing i always hear about discipline in any way shape or form is that consistency is key yeah and so if we mess up if we skip a day if we are not um you know, if we don't meet all our goals or whatever, like it's okay, be kind to yourself. Yeah. You know, we can be more kind to ourselves. I think that that is a word yes. to just be more kind and have more grace. We have so much grace and kindness for others, but we rarely have that much grace and kindness for ourselves, yeah. especially when it comes to this area. I completely agree. Yeah. yeah. So switching gears, like you have things that you teach that are just yeah. some basics to renewing that mindset around health and well- wellness and things that can fuel your passion for this area yeah. um, that are healthier. So I'd love for you to share yeah. what that looks like. I would love that. So, um, and I have a like an online course or curriculum, like a self-paced course that I walk women through. And so I'll just talk about that. If you're finding yourself like it's middle of January or February, whenever you're listening yeah, to this, right. like <laughs> if you're listening in March, like there's nothing magical about January 1. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's something beautiful about this very moment right here. You can start right now. Amen. And so um, the four things I kind of walk my clients through is we first start with um, surrendering our health to our faith and capturing a vision from Him. Number one, like if you're like, I'm not doing the things, you go back to your why. Why do I want to get healthy? Right? We're talking about well, wellness in this in this particular um podcast why do i want to get healthy long vision long term um and for you that's what what does that look like And for me that is i want to do things today 
um, habits and healthy lifestyle because I want to bless my future self. I don't want to curse her. I don't want my decisions today to cause her ailment in the future because in the future when I am 75, I want to be the grandma who's on the ground with her grandkids or hiking with them. I want to have a very clear brain. I want to be able to have memories from now you know, 30, 40 years from now. So my why is really connected to who I want to be in, in the future, 20, 30 years from the from down the road. And also, I really want to honor God with this good body that He gave me. He gave me, He called it good, as it is, mm-hmm. at this weight, at this size, whatever, regardless if it changes or not, it's good right now. And I have been called to steward things, right? I've been called to steward the relations He's given me, the jobs He's given me. This body is the one thing I have that no one else can have. I've been called to steward it. So I want that well done, good and faithful servant, including my body and how I'm treating it. And so I would say when you're discouraged, not really sure, you know, where to pick up, you start with the why and surrendering your health to your faith. Like here, God, you can have this area and that will give you momentum to keep going. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then once once we've established that why, um, I, I go back to renewing the way we think. And so starting to find, like Sarah just found one. She, she found that kind of the all or nothing. Uh, she was saying, I felt like I failed. And so practicing those mindsets of where, where are these mindsets holding me back? And I really like, if we just do, there's a lot of mindsets we could talk about, but just that all or nothing, can you switch that to all or something? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, and I love it as like, what can I offer God today with my health? Can I offer that I'm just going to move my body um, one time around the block? Can I offer that I'm going to drink more water? Can I offer that I'm not go- not going to do X, Y, and Z or eat more vegetables, whatever it is? And that small thing um, gets to count, mm-hmm. gets to count. And so if we go to the third thing, we look at our systems and you start January 1 or March 1, like we like to start on those first of the months with this huge program to overhaul everything. Yeah. Your brain hates that. <laughs> like your brain was wired. No to wonder keep... we all quit. <laughs> right. It's, it's actually, I love, I kind of nerd out on like brain science and neuroscience, but your brain hates large change. And we go on New Year's Day and we try to change all the things at once. And no wonder we burn out. Your brain's like, no, 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 no. It's trying to keep you safe. It thinks you're, you're going to kill it because you're not feeding it and all the things. So my suggestion is picking something very small very simple and start to build habits. I tell my clients habits, not diets. We actually call them healthy rhythms. Like Mm -hmm. what's a rhythm that you can bring into your life and you start building them into something you already do. Um, BJ Fogg has a book called Tiny Habits and this is a system that I love. And you just build these tiny habits into things you already do. And then, so let's say you have your coffee in the morning. Most of us do. You have, you put a cup of water by your coffee pot And you say, before I drink my coffee, I will drink my water. Sounds so simple. We've heard it. But you do it. And then here's the big key that we don't do. Once you do it, you celebrate. And what I mean by celebrate is like, give yourself a little internal high five. Or a little fist bump. Like, yes, I did that one thing. Your brain loves that. It marks that as, oh, that was a little dopamine hit. I like that dopamine hit. I'm going to do that again tomorrow. And then you start building these up where you're doing. Maybe I like the one where if you want to start a yoga practice, Like that's a big jump from not doing anything to doing 25 minutes of yoga. Mm -hmm. So your promise to yourself is um, after I wash the dishes, I'm going to lay out my yoga mat. This is his format um, from Tiny Habits again, this book. But I didn't say do yoga. I didn't even say like do one pose. After I do dishes, I'm going to lay my yoga mat out. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to celebrate. Yes, Renee, I left my, I got my yoga mat out. That's really great. And what happens? Your brain likes it, but then you'll probably lay there and at least do like one or two stretches, right? And then you start to grow over time. So it's building habits that you can do long-term for the rest of your life, sustainable, especially with food, and then celebrating, giving that little celebration um, at the moment. Don't wait until you've done yoga for five weeks. Like do it today, that reward. And then the fourth thing I would suggest if you're just trying to get back into you know, be encouraged about your wellness journey. And let me just tell you that motivation and willpower will wane. So that's why you kind of need these systems of easy habits. And then you need accountability and community. Yeah, And if you don't like the word accountability, because that feels like, ouch, at least community, at least community where people are spurring you on, whether it's a gym class you go to, whether it's a Bible study, you, you know, that people are waiting for you. You know, we do that here at church. We come every Sunday to renew that mind. And so that accountability and community, I'm a coach and I have a coach that I check in once a week. It is vital to just any kind of change you're wanting to make or growth you're wanting to happen, do it alongside someone else. You can hire someone. It can be your best friend. It can be your mom. It can be your Your husband. Yeah. Yeah. Your kids. Yeah. You know, you don't do it alone um, and tell somebody your goal. Tell somebody what you're working on. 
brings it to the light, gives you more momentum. That is so good. I love this. This is so good. Well, what I would love to know, what has been like the most helpful word or scripture that you're holding on to for you personally right now in your journey? I would love to know that. Yeah. In my wellness journey, I, I, I've said it before, but Romans 12, one and two, um, Romans 12, one talks about, you know, offering our bodies as a sacrifice to God, right? That really transformed when it wasn't about me just trying to fit into culture, but like my body is his, that changed the game for me. And then I go back to be transformed by renewing the way you think, because then you'll be able to test and approve his will. Right. And so our minds and our thoughts, the things we're thinking are always true. Mm -hmm. Right. That lie I was believing, you're not good enough because of your size. Like I go back to that all the time of is this thought true? Does it line up with scripture? And so if we are trying to make change or I would say that scripture, like God's talking about it. Like you want change? Work on your mind, not just the diet you're doing or the new or the workout plan you're doing. Like what are your what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? And so that's just I've said it several times, but that's just where where I always have to go back to of like, okay, I'm going to be transformed. I love the word transformed. Mm-hmm. Being made from glory to glory. I want more of his glory. I'm going to renew my mind because the word says it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amen. And his words are fuel. Like that's yes. what I think is like, we can either choose to focus on our words and the things that we think, or we can choose to focus on what he says yeah. and let his words fuel the fire of our passion yes. and what are those passions? And we have to ask ourselves, what am I passionate about? And how are these passions going to impact my future? Right. And your passions and what you care about, the desires in your heart are directly connected to your wellness. Mm-hmm. Like, because if you're not well from a place of freedom, then how are you going to go do those passions and fulfill your calling? Like, I need you healthy and whole and free so you can do all the things you're called to do because I'm being blessed yeah. because of that. And so I think a lot of times, too, as moms, mm-hmm. We don't do a care our wellness because it's it's us and it's selfish. But like, we need you, moms, dads, busy dads, as single people. We need you healthy, mind, body, and spirit, so you can fit to fill your purpose because mm-hmm. that we're involved in that, right? You're Absolutely. part of the body, and you being fully who you are helps us experience more of Jesus. Yeah. Without us even talking about this quite yet, um, I just as I was thinking about this today in my car driving around running errands uh, for work this morning, but I was thinking about my view of health and wellness from when I was in junior high and high school um, to now. And it is quite different. You know, thank God for that because there has been so much more freedom in the way I think. But just to be vulnerable in this place, like when I was in junior high and high school, I had just the same, I'm I'm sure, a lot of the same thoughts as most young girls do is comparing myself to others and and even things on magazines and all that stuff. And it was all about that outward appearance piece. And that was such a distraction. And then, and then, what did I do? I, I don't know, I followed the crazy diets or I tried to follow the crazy diets and do the workouts and all the things, but there was still bondage. It was, it was still a heart issue that the Lord had not healed yet. And so thank, thanks be to him that over time, the Lord has redeemed that vision for my health and wellness. And I'm so thankful for that because in my thirties, they're not going to be defined by, by that. Right. You know, they're going to be defined by, a more healthy vision for what I want in the future. And I was thinking about like, what do I want for the future? Well, I want to be able to be the grandparent as well, to be able to be on the floor with my grandkids coloring, just like my grandmother did. You know, she was on the floor with us all the time, coloring and playing Barbies. And and the woman had cancer and that is what took her life. But even still, she was on the floor still doing with it. us yeah. doing it, yeah. you know? And um, and I'm thinking about even, I don't know, beyond the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I want to live a long life. I do. As long as the Lord will allow me to live, I want to live every day for His glory and yeah. for His name and for His renown. And I do not know what He's going to call me to in the future That's right. or where He's going to call me to in the future. He may call me to Africa in my 80s. I don't know. And you want to be ready. <laughs> and I want to be ready. Yeah. Nor do I want to be dependent on tons of medications either. Right. You yeah. know. And I look at other people that I know who are in those stages And they are healthy. And I'm like, yeah, that's encouragement to me. And that's not common, you know, but that's a redeemed view of what it means to live a healthy life. It is. And it takes, I think it just takes that awareness of, oh, there is a better way. Mm -hmm. Because we, as we're saying here, I'm in my 40s, you're in your 30s. Like, 
we know what it feels like to be that teenager or I'm thinking about your 20 year old audience, like, okay, well that sounds great for you, but how do I get there? Sure. Right. And I just, I have to go back to like allowing Jesus to be the Lord of this area. That's good. And so for me, I honestly had to say, first of all, the awareness of like, you care about this. And then second, I had to do some repenting, like, and there's nothing wrong with repentance. It's a beautiful gift. I had to go back and say, oh God, I'm so sorry. I have not stewarded this body well or my thoughts about it. I've spoke really poorly about your creation, right? Like I've cursed myself with my own words and I had to repent. And sometimes I still do that. And, and then I just, that inviting like, Hey, you can be Lord of this now. I'm going to give this to you, whatever that looks like. And he just does this beautiful unraveling of taking you from where you think it's about what you look like to where it's about what we're talking about. The vision of living a purposeful life with vitality and energy. Um, instead of that bondage. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's like you have freedom and the world's definition of freedom is doing whatever we want. God's definition of freedom is not being enslaved to anything. So if you're enslaved to food or your body or an idea of your body or anything else, like God has more for us. Amen. And so you don't have to stop there. You get to say, oh, wait, I'm God's child. I'm I'm gonna go after this freedom. And that's because he bought that for me on the cross. Yeah, that's so good. Well, we know we all get discouraged at times. Yeah. Um. And I would love for you to speak to the people who right now might be fighting discouragement. Maybe they haven't even started uh, thinking about this area. Maybe this is a complete new topic, yeah, 100%. Uh, or maybe it's taking individuals longer than they thought, you know, to get Preach. to where. <laughs> Let me just tell you right <laughs> now, go. it's most likely going to take you longer. Like, let's just, let's just take that off the table. Like, if you're discouraged or you're like, I don't want to do it because it's going to take a long time, it is going to take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a wellness like six weeks and done. It's a wellness journey your whole life because your whole life you want to be well. And so I think that's also that mindset of like, I'm going to be in this for the long haul. Well, what would you say to the person who is spinning right yeah. now? So I would say if you're spinning, if you're discouraged, you're like, where do I even start? Like, can you just stop and, and think about like, what would be fun Ooh, in my question. wellness? Mm-hmm. Like, what would be fun? What would I enjoy to do? And, and And this could be with your food. This could be with exercise. This could be with like, hey, Maybe God's calling you to get some more sleep, and that oh, could be yeah. really fun. Meaning, like He's giving you permission to shut down at nine instead of eleven, you know. Yeah. And and just and instead of it being this punishment, I have to shame game because that's what people will hear. Like I take that off of you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's this is an invitation of the Holy Spirit. He's inviting you into like, hey, let's do this wellness journey together. What's something fun that you and the Holy Spirit are going to do? And maybe it's new recipes in the mm-hmm. kitchen. Maybe it's a new workout plan with your best friend. Um, so look for the fun. Look for the joy and, and just start doing simple little things that are going to bless your life that you would enjoy. Yeah. Like, please don't go and cut out all sugar. Like, <laughs> there is a time and place, I guess, for fasting with sugar. I get it. But like, that doesn't sound fun. And if you're discouraged, that's not where you want to yeah. go. Yeah. Like, let's look for some fun. Let's, where could this be a get to for you instead of a have, have to? to? Right. Yeah. yeah. I love the phrase, like, the, it's a scripture in the Bible. It says, do not be discouraged and do not be dismayed. I will strengthen you. That's Isaiah 41 10. And when I was thinking about being strong for 2023, like, I want to be strong in all areas of my life. Yeah. I want to be a strong woman of the Lord. I want to be a strong mom, a strong wife, a strong pastor, all the things. But I also want my body to be strong. And so for me, one of the goals for, my health journey involved moving my body more Um, because I do try to eat healthy and I'm have a lot of grace for that area too. Um, and I'm not the cook in my, my family, so I don't have to worry about that. Thank the Lord for my husband who likes to That's cook. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I love that question about what's fun. It's such a great question to start there because I know myself like what – I can tell you what doesn't sound fun. What doesn't sound fun to me is an hour-long workout. Right. That doesn't sound fun to me. And your brain won't – like what we talked about before, your brain right. will be like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So yeah. like I know I'd already set myself up for failure there. Yes. So like for me, what sounds fun is my minimum, which is 30 minutes. I can move my body for 30 minutes. All right. Well, how do I enjoy moving my body? Yeah. And to me, it doesn't look the same every day. Okay. Because I get bored. Yeah. <laughs> But this is so good that you're getting that self-awareness. So I hope as people are listening, they start to become self-aware of like, oh, I don't actually like to run. Yeah. So why am I trying to be a runner right now? Yeah. Or or my definition of running is you have to run nonstop for 15 minutes to call yourself a runner. And like, what if running was like two minutes of running and one minute of walking and boom, you're a runner. Mm -hmm. Like, again, that's the way you think about it. Yeah. And that's inviting the fun in. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Well, I add of all this, I hear you saying like, dream with God, talk to him about this whole, this whole thing about health and wellness, then like put some intention, put some structure, some scaffolding around what the Lord has said and what he's revealed to you and then do it. Yeah. And then review it. Like go back and go, okay, is this working? 
If not, do I need to make some tweaks? Yeah, is with- my consistency, my margin, do I need to make some tweaks in some places? Like for me, I know I'm not going to cheat my wrist. That's one place I'm not going to cheat. So if I don't have the margin for the, like that was where I got stuck this week was I didn't have margin for my workouts the way I typically do. And so, but I wasn't going to cheat my rest because yeah. I know I need it to be a good person and a good human the next day. I need a certain amount of hours of sleep. That was your priority. That was my priority. Yeah. But I still move my body, just look different. Yeah. And so I reviewed it, made a couple of tweaks. I'll probably look into next week and review it and make a couple of tweaks again because there's freedom in all of this. There's yeah, and freedom. I love what you're saying is like the evaluation. Like yeah. sometimes something doesn't work and you need to push through. Mm-hmm. And sometimes something doesn't work because it doesn't work. Yeah. Maybe it's the wrong goal. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we, we look around and we're like, everyone's on a health goal where they're on a diet eating X, Y, and Z, but maybe that's not your goal. And so making sure you evaluate, is this the right goal? Is this the right season? Maybe you're doing something in the wrong season and just, and being okay and and not putting the guilt and shame, but being okay to be like, okay, we're going to shift and move and change and adapt. Yeah. And th- because you're doing this, I'm just going to spoil alert. You're doing this for the rest of your life because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's a wellness journey for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. It is not until the end of 2023. And, yeah. and so it's okay if things are going to shift and they're going to shift. Mm-hmm. So evaluation, I love that word, is a really key component of doing this from a place of freedom. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Before we wrap up, is there like one thing of our whole conversation, which we talked about so much, there's so much just freedom and beauty in this conversation. But before we do sign off for today, is there just one thing you would want to really reiterate for our listeners today? Yeah, it's the freedom piece. It's that God cares so much about you. He sees you and he adores you. He made you and he's called you good. And so if you're sitting there right now, I think about like, I just can sense people sitting in their car or even maybe they're on the treadmill and they're like, I really don't like this body and it brings them pain. Like I just want them to know that God sees them and that he has healing and freedom for you in it. Um, And to know that 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 is available to you. And it's not this mystical, like just, just talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. Just let him, let him comfort your heart. Just tell him, Hey God, this hurts. And I would really like, I'd want, that piece for people like yeah. everything else is great and I love all the do's and the tasks and the habit building yes. but like the freedom I would want you to hear that like God is having offers freedom for you he loves you and even if right now you don't love your body that's okay just take it to him and let him let him minister to that mm-hmm. place in your heart mm-hmm. Well, I want to say to the all the mamas and daddies out there you're crushing it yeah whether you feel like you aren't or whatever, you're crushing life right now. Come on. You're not perfect. None of us are, but we are alive. We have been given breath for today. And the Lord is with us and the Lord is for us. Who can be against us, you know? Amen. And so I encourage you today to go to him with your thoughts and with what you do with your body and what you put in your mouth and all the things. I love this whole conversation. This is definitely going to be one I re-listen to over and over and over again. It was so beautiful. Thanks so much, Renee, for joining us today. Let everyone know real quick, where can people find you? Yeah. So I hang out mostly on Instagram under Renee Boo. Boo is B-O-O-E. There's a silent E on the end. So I have Instagram and Facebook for Renee Boo and I hang out there. Um, I have a well a website, thewellandfreetribe.com, where you can learn more about um, the program I mentioned and things of that nature. But if you want to hang out, it's just all the, like, seriously, I don't take myself too seriously um, over on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Renee. It was my pleasure. I hope everyone has the most well and free year possible. Amen. Uh, Don't you just love her? She's so encouraging, right? And you know you're going to want to follow her. She is just the real deal, y'all. And she's that way online. I love her vulnerability. I love that she's like, yeah, haven't arrived in this place. I'm not perfect. But you can hear the freedom she's living from. Can't you? I mean, it's just you can you can hear in the way she talks about her journey to health and wellness that that she has surrendered that to the Lord and the Lord has redeemed so many pieces of her story and continues to use that redemption to bless others. And I love that. I wrote so many things down that she said, like habits, not diets. I mean, I want to get in the habit of surrendering my health to God and asking him what he thinks. And I encourage you to do the same. Ask the Lord to renew your mind in the way you think about your body or your size or what you put in your mouth or how you move. I mean, whatever it is, surrender it today. Surrender your health to him and ask God to change the way you think 
about your health and help you steward your body well. Maybe you need to repent like I did. I I finished up this conversation and was like, oh, I need to repent in some places because I want to allow the Lord to be Lord of this area. Or maybe you need to add the community factor into this area of your life to help you build the momentum you need to make uh, healthy decisions and healthy choices in your life and to walk in greater levels of freedom. Or maybe you just need to look for the fun in this area because we need you healthy. Yes, you. We need you healthy, mind, body, and spirit so that you are fit to fulfill your purpose on this earth. Thanks so much for listening to the Beyond Sundays podcast. We hope you'll have a wonderful day. And remember, God is moving all the time and he's moving in your life too, Beyond Sundays.